A year and a half ago, Valley Cities uh, went down a really interesting road that leads us here today. I am extremely proud of uh, our board members and staff members and partners who have created this, what I believe is a wonderful treatment facility for people throughout the region. Somewhere in the crowd is our architectural team that uh, did this amazing remodel. You, you really can't even begin to understand the before photos don't do justice to how ghastly a place this was and how beautiful and well-lighted and welcoming this facility is now and will be for many, many years to come. So um, again, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure to introduce our county executive, Dal Constantine. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ken. And we're joined by a number of very special guests uh, from whom you'll hear in a moment. But also, I wanted to make note of the fact that we are joined by uh, King County's magnificent prosecutor, Dan Satterberg. Thank you for being here, Dan. <laughs> you know, it was a, a year and a half ago uh, that I stood with other officials just outside of this facility, when it really was, you know, exposed wires and studs, it was a mess. It was also raining that day. Uh, and we announced that we were bringing together a wide range of experts to help us confront the devastating heroin and opioid epidemic. A public health crisis that has spared no age group, no income level, no race, no neighborhood. Since then, we've worked with community partners to turn those expert recommendations into results. We've made nearly 2,800 life-saving naloxone kits available to law enforcement and treatment providers so that they can reverse the effects of overdose. We've made it easier to safely dispose of unused and expired medication, including prescription painkillers, setting up 110 secure drop boxes in pharmacies and law enforcement agencies all across King County. We started a pilot project that offers rapid access to buprenorphine, which uh, is available at our public health needle exchange. And Governor Jay Inslee signed a law that enacted the recommendations from the task force we created, modernizing state regulations to lower barriers to treatment and medication. Today, we celebrate a new partnership, one that will save lives, connect more people to integrated treatment, and help more people transition out of homelessness. King County contributed $1 million in capital funding to help Valley Cities get this facility up and running. This will be the first detox facility in King County to offer treatment for addiction and mental health challenges making it possible for staff to better address the underlying cause of behavioral issues. Our partnership will also help us confront homelessness in the region. I'm pleased to let you know that we will be able to prioritize beds for people who are staying at the City of Seattle's Navigation Center, connecting them with the treatment they need to once again live healthy, meaningful, productive lives. Together, we're doing more than providing additional beds. We're connecting entire systems so that we can better confront challenges in mental health and addiction and homelessness. We're connecting people with outpatient resources that uh, help them succeed after they walk out these doors. And we're delivering on our shared commitment to help people fully recover and get their lives back on track. I want to thank all the partners who made today's celebration possible. Representatives Nicole Macri and Morgan Irwin uh, and other state legislators for including funding for this facility in the yet to be passed capital budget, <laughs> fingers crossed, and the talented staff here at Valley Cities. And so thank you, Ken, very much for everything you've done to make today a reality. And I'll hand it back to you. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Dal. We have um, a couple of folks with us today who are going to give you a brief testimonial that, you know what, treatment does work. People do recover. People do get better. So let me start by introducing Jen Lasky. Jen's going to say a few words. Yeah. I want to start by saying thank you for having me. I'm um, very active in the recovery community today and I'm constantly having individuals reach out to me regarding treatment options and I'm really looking forward to adding Valley City to my arsenal of resources. Um, you know, from the outside looking in, I came from a dual family household, I'm college educated, um, the typical picket fence American dream. You know, but like uh, Dow said, um, there's no picket fence that can keep out substance use disorder. And in 2011, I began to take prescription medication that was not mine, resulted in many years of heroin, methamphetamine, uh, methadone use. Um, in 2015, due to my choices, uh, I was brought up on a slew of charges and placed in FTC um, in CTAP. And they gave me an option for a deferred prosecution. And on that day, almost two years ago to that day, I was sent to a treatment facility. And that's when everything changed because I was lucky enough to be placed in a facility that gave me a safe place to lay my head, a safe place to examine what in my heart holes I was trying to fill and why. Um, my only wish is we begin to stop Focusing on the gloomy statistics, there are treatment centers that will tell the clients, you know, only three of you will make it. You know, I was lucky enough to be in a facility that said, you know, it might not be you. Instead, they said, why not you? And I believed them. And two years later, I have not used one time since I left that treatment facility. I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm employed, I'm a productive member of society. And not only that, but I have a passion for leading others to recovery and I share that passion with you. And so I look forward to seeing all the lives that you will change because when we save lives, we change the world. And so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Jen, that was, that was spectacular, it really was. All right, uh, one other person I'd like to introduce to you, um, a gentleman named Michael Moan. He's also a former client, and he's gonna tell you his story and how treatment works. All right. Again, I'd, I'd like to thank you guys uh, for having me. My name is Michael Moan, and uh, I am a person who is in long-term recovery. Uh, this February, uh, I will be celebrating three years of continuous sobriety. Um, from uh, drugs, alcohol, and uh, cigarettes. And uh, those days even include weekends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, am a, I, am a former, I am a former client here. Um, I have, uh, I've been to detox 25 times, and I've been to treatment four times. And uh, from somebody who was uh, one of the top salesmen in the nation for a company when he was 26 and had his life come to just this complete halt, uh, uh, because of the disease of addiction. Uh, something Dow said to me is that, uh, you know, really, uh, and, and what Jed said is this, you know, I'm, I'm somebody's son, um, I'm somebody's grandson, you know, and uh, I've got two, two children, and I'm somebody's father. But really, the disease of addiction is a respecter of no person. It can affect anybody, and I'm sure there's people in this room that have all been affected by it. But from that high-paying sales job to uh, fast forward 10 years down the road, uh, being homeless, um, living under a bridge, um, not knowing where my next meal was going to come from, um, my life was changed. Um, I, lost, uh, I lost a wife. Uh, I lost my kids. Um, most of all, I lost my, lost my self-respect. And um, one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this opportunity is if you, if you heard about 25 times in detox and four times in treatment centers, it's because there really was no, no bridge that was gapped, right? And basically right here is you guys have a one-stop shop. You guys have a detox and you guys have a treatment center. And so you guys are definitely addressing needs. They can just stay right here and, and get all the services that you guys provide. Um, I will tell you this, is that one, a, a few things that I learned in treatment 
um, to get me to this point right now. Um, one thing is that you guys taught me how to do the right thing. Just do the next right thing, right? And that's something that I continually do on a daily basis. But when I was in treatment and detox 25 times, four treatment centers, um, I came up with a saying, right? Just my, from my experience, what did I need to do to stay sober, right? And I came up with the, the definition, it was called strength of character. And to have strength of character, you have to do the right thing when no one is looking. And you have to make uncomfortable, you new comfortable. So this is something that I do on a daily basis. I do suffer from a disease, um, but it's 100% treatable. And one way to treat my disease is coming out here today and, and speaking at this grand opening. So I just wanted to thank you guys again. I'm super excited for this. This is a, a great thing. I appreciate you guys. That's all I got. Michael, thanks again. Thanks for being here. Before we uh, launch onto our tour, we're happy to uh, take questions from anyone who's in the audience. Can I ask a funny question? Um, I'm going to stick up here. What is the, um, what is the situation um, if the capital budget does not pass or does not pass with um, this money um, included for this term? So I'm at this point relatively confident that that will not occur. Um, we are coming together closer on a capital budget um, and uh, legislators will uh, be back in November, not on the capital budget, but we will have legislators together for our committee assembly days in November, giving you another opportunity for us to work on that. Um, uh, thousands of projects across the state uh, will be impacted if we don't pass a capital budget. Um, and Ken can speak to the particular impacts on Valley Cities, um, but I will say that um, it will be devastating uh, for uh, hundreds of projects across the state if we don't pass the capital budget, and that's providing a lot of motivation for state legislators to come together. Everything from our public schools to enormous investments in mental health um, in communities across the state to a number of infrastructure projects. Um, we are currently seeing the impacts of no capital budget rolling out across the state, including um, layoffs of state employees um, in state parks and other departments. So, thank you. Um, Valley Cities, we did something other places might not be able to do in that we got a loan. We uh, went to our friends at Bank of America, and uh, they basically have loaned us the money on the presumption that we're going to be successful and that we're going to repay the loan and I'm hoping the capital budget passes but in the event that it doesn't we're prepared to service the loan and we're, we're fortunate that we're able to do those kinds of things not every agency can do that other questions what's the overall cost of this facility uh, this construction and, and the annual budget uh, this facility cost uh, $4 million to buy just under uh, $9 million for the renovation. The uh, operating budget's not included in that. Eventually, the operating budget for this facility will be $5 million. I'm looking at a, uh, about $5 million on an annual basis. When the facility is fully staffed, and right now um, the region and Valley Cities is no exception, is really experiencing a labor shortage. And so we have hired enough staff to start 16 beds, hopefully around the first of the month. And we're going to continue to recruit until we actually end up with more than 100 FTEs working here around the clock seven days a week. <laughs> okay, I have to be politically correct, I suppose, right? No need for that. No. You know, um, I'm happy that we live in a place where, where places like Valley Cities can take some risks and can push some envelopes and work with the county staff to create these kinds of new and dynamic programs. We intend um, to offer buprenorphine to everybody who's here. But one of the real challenges is then we have to have the outpatient capacity so that those patients can continue to be followed. 
And that, so Valley Cities has um, about a dozen locations throughout the county, but we're also working with partners like Public Health and Neighbor Care and um, Health Point to make sure that eventually there will be thousands of people, I believe, who will be prescribed buprenorphine and then followed on an outpatient basis. Um, can I ask, you said that um, you'll offer buprenorphine to everyone here. Will there be other forms of detox available here other than for opiates? Uh, yes, we're going to detox um, virtually any form of drugs or alcohol. We were talking about that last night, and um, our medical director is somewhere here in the house, and she was saying, well, we're even going to do benzodiazepines, and it's like, oh, really? And it's like, <laughs> um, anybody who's been in, in the addiction world knows the difficulties and risks associated with detoxing people from what we call benzos, and by God, we're going to do the best we can with that as well. More questions? Is there a Constantine, if, if you would expand on that question about the difficulty of doing uh, this uh, more in the past. I mean, I think the, the underlying challenge is that many of our uh, uh, community partners and many of the programs and funding sources provided by government have uh, uh, begun as very specific, uh, with very specific focuses. And what we need to do in this area and many others is recognize that we have to take a holistic approach to bring together the resources that are going to help address people's uh, underlying challenges. Sometimes these go, uh, you know, out beyond what we're talking about today. They may go into uh, issues in the criminal justice system, for example. They may go into issues around job training or the ability to uh, be able to secure housing. These are all connected issues and we as a region are becoming much better at identifying how we can work together across silos to better serve the people. If I heard, I was like, I'm sorry, but if I heard the 16 minutes here. You want to talk about that? Um, we're starting initially with 16 beds because that's the number of staff that we'll have. Ultimately, we'll have over 70 beds in the facility. The uh, ground floor where you are today will be about 32 beds specifically for detox from drugs and alcohol. The upstairs, which you'll get to see in a few moments, will be about 40 people. So um, around 70 people per night. On, and we expect to be full. We expect to be full practically from the moment we open. This facility is eligible for Medicaid reimbursement, and that would be one of the really principal sources of funding for this facility on an inpatient basis, and certainly is one, the, the principal funding for Valley Cities on an outpatient basis as well. And I thought Medicaid was limited to 16 beds. Well, if you want to get into that conversation, we should probably take that okay. offline, because now we're talking about federal policy and, uh, and some really obtuse things, I guess is a nice way Where to say it. Uh, virtually everybody who will stay here will have some form of insurance, right? But most of the people will have public insurance, Medicaid. But we will accept private insurances as well, and occasionally a private pay person. So there's no money coming out other than you know, from the operating budget or anything, from the county coffers or anything like that? No, actually, uh, the principal source of funds is a contract that we have with King County. King County. Uh, will pay us for people who have Medicaid who are staying here. More questions? This is kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> How will you tie in uh, mental health into this recovery center? From the outset, we're going to accept people who have dual diagnoses or co-occurring disorders. We are not going to exclude anybody who has a major mental illness. Uh, we are really fortunate to have really amazingly experienced people who have signed on to work here from Harborview, from the VA, from DESC. So we, we've assembled a great team of professionals um, who are like, we're up for the challenge, buddy. Bring it on. So um, we're, we're proud that we're not going to exclude people from treatment here. And the, one, one more from the county sector. <clears throat> Ultimately, 
70 people here, but it will, it will be full as, as soon as they can get to 70 people. Uh, with the extent of the problem here, it feels like a drop in the bucket. How much does this help? How much more do you think? Oh, I mean, it helps a lot, uh, but it is certainly not enough, and we're going to continue adding beds uh, for treatment on demand, uh, for addiction, for mental health challenges. We're going to continue to add beds to uh, relieve this challenge of uh, people with mental health crises being boarded at hospitals rather than being in facilities where they can receive help. We are doing this not just directly as a government, but with nonprofit partners, our friends uh, in the uh, in the um, uh, medical field who, who are stepping forward and recognizing that this is both uh, a, a humanitarian imperative and something that is smart for them to do rather than having people in hospital where they're not able to get the kind of help they need, having them in a facility like this that is directed at getting to their underlying challenges so that they can get back uh, to living their lives. And, and I'm really, it's been very heartening how people have rallied around and recognized that uh, although we see a lot of homelessness and that is a symptom in, in, in part of many of these challenges, we haven't invested in the kinds of systems in this state we need to get to those underlying issues which are addressable and, and, and really taking them on. Uh, this state cut back on funding uh, for treatment years ago during the recession, and it has not yet been adequately restored. We have champions in the legislature, but we need to, to, to tell folks that the standard that we have come to accept is not acceptable in Washington State, that we can do better, and King County wants to lead the way on that. Once someone is ready to leave here, will there be more permanent Yes, uh, and Adrian Quinn, uh, who is the head of our Human Services Department, can tell you more about the work that we are doing to really begin to get ahead of the challenge of uh, access to housing, affordable housing, uh, housing to transition out of homelessness in our community. Uh, we've built a very solid foundation, and now we're pursuing strategies that's going to add significantly to the inventory and make sure that folks have a place to go where they can be secure and take those next steps to taking their lives back.